Hey everybody, my name's Jamie, and we're continuing on part two of creating a 2D JavaScript game. Um, following along with Code & More's uh, Java version of the 2D uh, tile-based game. So this is part two. Now in part one, I did, did forget to mention that um, you should be running a local server, something like Xamp or WAMP. Um, so far, I don't think anything... Uh, I don't think anything would stop you uh, from just using it on a local computer without a server, but it will eventually, once we start loading in maps and things like that, um, cause issues. So you do want to have XAMPP or WAMP or even your own server that you can FTP into to load these files. I suggest personally running XAMPP or WAMP um, from your local machine. That way you can run things right away. Uh, also, I believe that uh, you can run with WebStorm, it allows you to run um, files in a server that it provides. Uh, so you sh you could still, without Xamp or WAMP, run it um, if you have WebStorm. But eventually, you will run into problems uh, if we don't uh, have a server to run all of this on. So, kind of picking up where we left off last time. Uh, last time we just got in our launcher we just have it creating a uh, changing the document title so what I want to do is create a canvas object uh, so that we can uh, start drawing to the screen possibly so one thing that I want to do now is create a new class um, and we're actually going to create a new package and that's going to be called display and it's actually, I mean, if you're just using Notepad, it's just another folder within the classes folder. Um, and in display, I want to actually create the display class. So it will be a JavaScript file, and it's going to be display. All of my classes are going to have a capital letter when they're a class. So uh, to get started with this, let's just... Let's just kind of build in some functionality uh, so that we can create a canvas object uh, with the ability to write it to the screen, as well as let's uh, keep, you know, continue to have the ability to change the title uh, of the document. So first thing we're doing is defining the class or the module for require, and we're requiring, uh, let's require jQuery in here and we'll require class class so this is the ability to you know obviously create a class that we can extend in the future and all that good stuff so function and we're going to pass in the money sign uh, for jQuery now I'm not even sure if we're going to be using jQuery uh, for this or not but we'll just we'll just require it because it does have a little bit to do with the DOM um, and then we will be able to refer to class with the class variable with a capital C. So inside here, I'm going to define a few variables. So we'll have a canvas, oops, canvas variable, title, width, height, and graphics. And we will, I'll explain what all of them are for as we go. Some of them are a little bit self-explanatory, but Anyways, we'll continue on. So we will create now uh, a variable called, and I'm going to put it right here, variable called display, and it's going to be equal to class.extend. And just like our launcher, we will have an initialize function, and it will be, and here we're going to pass in a title, a width, and a height. And inside of here, we will set the title. Uh, this is obviously the title uh, that we've defined up here. So JavaScript doesn't have classes. It doesn't really have protected uh, functions or m methods or, um, or variables, things like that. So uh, some of the stuff that we're going to have to do is a little bit different as far as figuring out how to refer to variables in the correct scope. So some things that, that uh, Code More does uh, with his variables such as defining them as a private variable or a public variable or protected some of them may be we may be able to do private variables fairly easy 
by just leaving them up here and referring to them in the class. Um, that's a good way to kind of create a private variable, but protected in, um, in public variables, they're kind of going to be the same. Now we can, we can personally do some stuff for ourselves, such as naming them a bit different, whether they're a private or a public variable. Um, but aside from that, uh, we, we can't really follow his exact, uh, his exact typing of the variables. So um, right now we do have the ability to use title as a private variable um, and setting it to the passed in title. So I do use underscores here so that uh, I think for all of my passed in values such as the underscore title underscore width, I use underscores um, and this allows me to um, kind of keep the same name as our private variable without any confusions, just underscore title. So we'll set that. We'll also set width equal to underscore width and height equal to underscore height. Now, um, instead of doing a bunch of stuff right in the constructor, we're just going to call a function called create display. Now this is going along with Codermore's way of doing this. Um, so it, it, so far this is almost looking identical if you follow along with his tutorial. So this is going to be private method uh, create display. And if we want we can even just kind of label these private variables. And um, this is just the class definition right here. So this is all stuff for the class specifically. Um, so this is going to be our function create display and uh, we will now we will now do some stuff for the actual DOM so we'll say document dot title is equal to title there we go and we will now say reference our body document dot body all right so I'm just using this in case uh, later on we decide to refer to the body um, we don't have to say document dot body every time so now I can say body dot inner HTML is equal to and now what we're gonna pass in is a canvas so to do that it's a canvas tag. I'm going to set the ID equal to canvas so we can refer to it in the future as canvas. Um, and its width will be equal to the width that we passed in. So width and its height will be equal to height. and we will close the canvas tag. So let me go over this. So we're creating a canvas tag, setting the ID to canvas. We're setting the width equal to width. Now because we're in, we're basically creating a string before here, um, we're exiting the string to refer to a variable that's in JavaScript. And then we're jumping back into it to finish the height and out to set the height and then back in obviously to finish and close the tag. So this is exactly how it should be set up. Um, and if you know anything about strings and concatenating and all that, uh, that should make a lot of sense. Now the other thing that we need to do is we're going to set the graphics variable equal to the uh, the get context 2d for the canvas so what this basically does is this is going to be a uh, just how code and more says this is the tool brush this is how we are going to uh, talk to the canvas and add things and you know and manipulate the the canvas uh, through the graphics object so that is going to be document dot get element by ID now I have tried a few other ways this is the only way that seems to work I you know you think you'd be able to just refer to the canvas um, or you know go to the body and or, or even set body dot uh, inner HTML or something set this canvas somehow uh, but no you have to refer to it um, 
by grabbing the element this way. So we're going to grab canvas like so, and then get context, and we're getting the 2D context. So again, this is our paintbrush, and this is essentially setting the paintbrush or the graphics tool uh, to the, our canvas, which is on the, uh, which is going to be in the body of our game HTML file. Um, so there's some other things that we can do here. We can create a few public functions. So uh, we'll say getters. So we'll create some getters here. So how we do this, this is how we're going to essentially add more methods to the class that we've already defined. So we have this, we could come in here and type in all these functions, but it would start to look messy. What we can do here though is we can set up some functions like so. So display dot prototype. So this means that um, we will be able to access these functions as if they were kind of created in the constructor and uh, they are per instance. So if we had multiple instances of the display class, any functions here will return specific um, data for that instance, such as the width and the height and things like that. So we're going to say get width and that is going to be equal to a function that returns width. Okay, and the same thing can be done with uh, height, and it's going to return height, and <clears throat> we also want to, if for some reason we want to get the title, so let's come up here and I'm actually going to put the title above it. So we'll say get title and that's going to return title oops title um, and the reason we have these getters is because these variables are private because they exist only within the scope and they're not something that we're returning so these are just things that are only accessible here now when we create a new instance of the display class uh, it will give us access to these functions via whatever we set um, our new display to. So we also can say display dot prototype dot get graphics is equal to function and we can return our brush, our graphics brush, graphics. Oops, got a lot of extra stuff there. There we go. So now that we've got these here, uh, and one thing about PHP Storm or uh, WebStorm is they really want us to close these with semicolons. You don't need to. So if you are working in anything else, you won't need to do that. It's just something that uh, they want, they feel needs to be done. Um, <clears throat> so now that this is done, one final thing that we have to do is we have to return display so that any packages that require this um, uh, the display class will have access to this function display or the class display that we've created um, now that this is set I'm going to go into the launcher and instead of having this stuff here we can we can actually just well, we can say title width and height. So I know we're gonna we're kind of going deeper than we need to, but due to some of the facts, the fact that we have to have that main.js, I feel like we should just uh, kind of use it um, anyways. So I like having a launcher. The main.js could potentially take over the launcher, um, but having it named launcher and knowing what it's for um, is is kind of nice. Uh, so I'm gonna though we're a little bit going a little bit too deep on on and a little redundant. Um, I'm gonna leave it like this. So right now the launcher is going to take a title, a width, and a height. And all it's going to do is pass that into a new uh, display. So one thing we have to do before we do before we can even do that is we need to refer to that new class we've made. So this is going to be display 
and we're obviously in the app.js folder or the app.js file and this is going to be app slash classes slash display slash display with a capital D. Now we have access to display by just using the word display. So we can say comma display and refer to it here as display. And now inside of our constructor here, we can say far display is equal to a new display passing in title, width, and height. So, and you can see kind of now why it's kind of why it seems a bit redundant because we're passing, we're creating a launcher class, we're passing in variables into it, which are just creating a new display. Um, and, and we could just kind of get rid of the launcher class and do this all from the main, but just just because I kind of want to have that launcher file in there. Um, and require makes me have a main.js we're going to do it this way. Um, so now we're going to pass in a title which will say tile game. We'll pass in a width of 600 and a height of 300. And from here let's see what kind of errors we have and see if we are good. Um, just double checking our quotes we got open close open close open close so that should be fine there all right and I don't think I need these parentheses here so I'm gonna get rid of those all right let's see what kind of errors that we can debug if we have any so we'll come here and I'm going to hit Control Shift J. I believe that brings up the uh, console. And <clears throat> unexpected token in display on line 49, it says. So let's see if it's correct. And we do have an error on 49. We do not have an equals. So get graphics has to be equal to a function and return graphics. So let's see if that was the only thing we have or if we've got more going on. All right, so no errors. Let's go, oh wait, we do have an error. Get context of null. So looks like get element by ID canvas is not, uh, is not grabbing the actual canvas that we've put in there. So let me see, get context, get context 2D. Okay. Um, let's just wrap these in parentheses. I don't know why that would be any kind of an issue. Um, get context of no. Line 36. Graphics is equal document dot get element by ID canvas. This is canvas get context. I will, I'm going to double check this real quick and figure out what's going on. All right, some of you probably think I am ridiculous. Um, it's get enter, or inner HTML, so not enter for some reason. I don't know why I had a T there. Um, so if we refresh this here, we should not have any errors. We've got title game, uh, tile game up at the top as the title. And if we look in the body here, we have a height, uh, width and a height. Now it looks like I am missing some quotations here in that. So I have to end this with a semi or with a uh, single quote. And I believe that is 
it. So now if we refresh the page, we should have a little bit better looking code. There we go. So we have a canvas and we have a width of 600 and a height of 300. So from here we've created the display class, we've set everything up for the display class, and we've got the canvas running. In the next tutorial I think we will start drawing to the canvas and uh, and doing a little bit more with the actual game, maybe even setting up our core game class. Alright, I will see you there.